Now we're, next, now we're going to look at another quantity. Uh, quantity is called momentum. Uh, momentum is, it has a symbol P, it's a vector, and so it's equal, and it's equal to mass times the velocity. Um, and it's a useful quantity because um, it's conserved during collisions. Uh, energy is typically not. It's, it's typically lost during collisions. But momentum is conserved. So it's, it's very useful, uh, provided there's no external forces. So, I mean, for example, if you were dropping something, the, the momentum is not conserved because the velocity will increase, right? And that's because of the external force of gravity. But if you have a situation where there's no external forces, such as, uh, let's have two balls on a table, and let's say that they kind of roll towards each other. Um, this one's A, and this one is um, B. And what's gonna happen is, when they meet in the middle, they are gonna collide, and if you look at his A and his B, then B is going to push on A in this direction. You call that force of B on A. And A is going to push on B in this direction. And that's called the force of A on B. Now you know that because of Newton's, Newton's third law, that the F of B on A is equal to minus the force of A on B. But the force depends on the momentum change. In fact, you can see that, I mean, if we just write F equals MA, uh, A being the acceleration, then that's M into V minus U divided by T, but the force, net force, let's say, so that's F net equals mv minus mu uh, over t and each of these these are these are the momentum right so this is the this is actually delta p over t so force is changing momentum over time so we can look at this situation we can look at each of these forces these are forces these forces can be written as the change in momentum over time so if we have fb on a equals minus f a on B. So this is on A and this is on B. So F of B on A is equal to um, the, the mass of A times the acceleration of A and F of A on B is the mass of B times the acceleration of B and this would be negative. And we can write that as um, the change in the momentum of A equals minus the change in momentum of B. Because we're just having M times uh, delta P of T and as, as it is for the other one. Okay, so delta P A plus delta P B must be equal zero, which means that the total delta P, right? Is zero. Essentially, you're saying that the momentum, momentum change of A is equal to the momentum change of B. It's exactly the same as saying the force of B on A is equal to minus the force of A on B. But this, the fact that the total momentum is, is change is zero means that the total momentum is constant. Which means it never changes. Now let's let's apply that to uh, the hill problem. So here's the hill problem again. You've got your mass at the top. What did we say? We said it was five. Dropping a height of ten meters. Ice, ice, ice. But now let's stick a mass in here. This one is going to be ten kilograms. And it's going to. What's going to happen? It's going to slide down. It's going to whack into the ten. And then it's going. They're going to stick together and they're gonna hit a spring over here, spring again. 
So the, the, the masses stick together. Let's just say the masses stick together. So if they stick together, how does that affect the compression of the spring? Well, let's see. Um, marking on the points again, remember this is A, this is B, uh, let's say they collide at C, uh, let's say we're over here at D. So the energy at A, all right, well that was MGH. Same as before, is 500 joules. Uh, the energy at B, uh, well that's also 500 joules, as we said before, and you could write that as a half mv squared. I want to find out what the velocity is at B. I want to find that velocity just before it hits the 10 kilogram mass. So I can actually solve for that because I have 500 equals one half times by five times by V squared, where this is a velocity just before it hits the other mass, just before the collision. So let's solve for, if we rearrange that, we get V squared is equal to um, uh, 200, uh, which means that V is about 14.4 meters per second. So the energy of B is half mv squared and the velocity of it, of the, of the five kilogram mass, when it's at this point, C, that velocity is about 14.4 meters per second. So let's just draw that again. Comes down, um, excuse me, comes down, collides. So what we have is we have one here and one here. They've stuck together, this is five, this is 10. And after they stuck together, the whole thing moves off at a velocity, call it stick. Velocity of the thing stuck together. Now I want to find out what that is. Now I can't use energy conservation. I have to use momentum conservation. So the momentum before the collision is just equal, is simply equal to mv, where that is, that is 5 multiplied by 14 point four meters per second. And the momentum after the collision is also equal to five times by fourteen point four because it's the same as before. But now both masses are stuck together. So we have M1 plus M2 times by V stick. Well, that's the sum of the masses. So now we have five times by 14.4 equals five plus 10 is 15 times by V stick. And we can now rearrange that to get V stick is equal to, uh, it's gonna end up as the square root of 200 divided by three meters per second. So this is the velocity of the stuck together mass, the velocity of the composite mass. So now the energy at uh, just after collision is equal to a half times the total mass, five plus 10, times by V stick squared, where that's the velocity just above, which is essentially means it's gonna be a half into 15 into uh, 200 over nine, if you square that V stick. And this comes out at about 167 joules. So this is the energy just after the collision. Now then, what happens, the composite mass, here it is, n and the five, that thing is sliding along at this, with this energy equal to 167 joules, hits the spring and compresses the spring. So we want to, we, all of that energy is converted into spring energy, so we can again, we can simply say that um, 167 equals one half k x squared, K is equal to 100 again, as before. Uh, if we rearrange and solve that, we will end up with X equals 1.83 meters, which is considerably less than before. The reason being uh, that you lost a lot of energy during that collision. In fact, the energy loss during the collision is 500 minus the 167. So it's about 333 joules lost due to the collision. That would have been through the molecules squashing. That's basically lost as heat.